Hey everybody and welcome to Latter Day Divers. My name is Will Perez and I am excited to dive into the scriptures with you today. I thought I'd hold off on the videos, maybe not buggy this week, but I found something that I was really excited to share. Today we're going to cover some major implications from what some might consider a minor character in the Book of Mormon. Abish. Abish. Abish? Abish. I'll be right back. Does anybody even use this thing anymore? Abish. Now you've studied Alma 17, 18, 19, so I'm not going to bog you down with too much of the context here. We'll just jump straight to the symbolism. You ready? Let's dive. Oh, two blasts of dive alarm, password dive, dive. Dive, dive. I would submit to you that Abish can teach us a ton if we see her as a type and a shadow or a symbol of prophets, seers, and revelators. For example, Abish had a personal conversion to the Lord. She had a relationship with him and was ready to testify of him. Being one of the servants at the king's house, Abish had had a personal witness of the rising of the king who had slept in God. Maybe some cool implications there as we think of the king of kings who slept in God and resurrected on the third day, the same way that Lamoni kind of woke up from this sleep on the third day. After having this special witness, Abish ran from house to house, making it known unto all the people that perhaps this might cause them to believe in God. Prophets are called after they receive this witness, this special witness, to bear testimony to all nations, all houses, all peoples, so that we might believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Elder Anderson has taught that the most important role of the Lord's prophet is to teach us about the Savior and lead us to Him. I think Abish is a great example of someone who's doing that for the people. Abish's efforts led the people to assemble themselves together unto the house of the king. Now again, if you appreciate this metaphor or symbolism with me, the house of the king, the house of the Lord, might be related to temples in our day. And if there's one thing that our prophet today is inviting us to assemble together at or in or towards or to, it's the house of the king, the holy temples of God. Abish feels sorrow for the sins and contentions of the people. She's sometimes disappointed, let down. How many prophets have wept over the wickedness and the sins of our generation as they understand the potential of the brotherhood of mankind and sometimes how we fall short of the Savior's redeeming arms. And finally, Abish takes others by the hand so that they too can testify of Jesus Christ. I love how she takes the queen by the hand and the queen bears a powerful testimony and then she takes the king by the hand so prophets impact us one by one by one like Abish did and like Elder Anderson has taught us a prophet doesn't stand between you and the Savior he stands beside you and points the way to the Savior I believe studying Abish in this light can really help us understand the role of prophets seers and revelators and appreciate them for what they are who they are and how they point us to Jesus Christ and bear testimony of the King. Now I want to share with you two side note considerations based on this general premise. One, as I was studying this and putting it together, I'm thinking hardcore prophets, seers, and revelators, but then I also thought, well, anyone can do what Abish is doing, and it's a beautiful thing. Aside from those that are called and set apart and ordained as prophets, seers, and revelators to speak for the church to the world, Moses taught, would that all the Lord's people were prophets. I think what Abish just did that I went through with you, bearing witness of the king, inviting others to assemble to gather at his house, mourning for the sins of the world, pointing others to Christ, you and I can do. President Nelson has told us that every time we invite anyone to do anything that helps them to take a step closer to making ordinances and covenants, we are participating in the gathering of Israel the most important work in all the world. Abish teaches us what prophets, seers, and revelators do, and also shows us that in our own realm, on our own level, at our own sphere, we can also assist in the work. Now, a side note to that side note, Abish, as a woman, has a powerful influence and a powerful testimony, and we can't discredit the lesson that's found there. One of my favorite quotes that I've shared before comes from Julie M. Smith, talking about how scandalous it was that even in the New Testament, women were chosen to be the first witnesses of the resurrected Lord. And even at a time where Jewish law didn't allow them to legally be witnesses, Julie M. Smith writes, The final note of Mark's gospel 
is that one cannot be a follower of Jesus. Indeed, one will not be given the opportunity to follow Jesus if one is not willing to listen to women and believe their words. Abish, as a woman, as a disciple, points people to Christ, and we would be foolish, as they would have been foolish, to disregard her words. And in the same way that prophets experience, that Abish experienced, that you and I may experience, some chose to believe they were converted, they listened and repented and were baptized, and many simply returned to their homes and would not hear. Second side note, and I hope not to stumble on this one. <laughs> this might be one of those things that makes sense to me and is like, blah, to everyone else, but I've been a little weighed down lately, specifically with temples. Uh, their temples are beautiful. Prophets like Abish did, like this symbol, they point us to gather and assemble ourselves at the house of the king. And what happens to the majority of people once they follow Abish's prompting and they go to the house of the king? They see something that to Abish was beautiful and yet they murmur and they don't understand it and they criticize and they argue and there's a spirit of contention and evil even someone tries to destroy or kill right this work no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper by the way but as i've seen some anti-church material and and people desecrating temple ordinances on youtube or on social media i think sometimes we gather at the house of the lord and like the lamanites did in chapter 19 we fail to see it for what it is and we begin to argue and and portray it in a dark way or an evil way or a confusing way and i see that happening a lot to temple ordinances something that is so beautiful and simple and that's why abish weeps she comes and she she's like what's she she feels sorrow they don't, they're not getting it and so what does she do she lifts up the queen and immediately we have this testimony of jesus christ and then some people get it until we truly start to focus on Jesus Christ at the center of temple worship and grasp that, it might be really easy to misunderstand or be confused. And the world sometimes doesn't get it, even though it's presented as a beautiful thing, not intended to be something uh, desecrated or dark or weird. And anyway, that's just kind of a side note. Uh, Abish invites them to gather at the house of the king, and many still don't get it and make light of it. But if we connect Jesus Christ to the ordinances of the temple and the gospel, there is power and they are a beautiful thing. I hope that made sense. Anyway, just leave you with my testimony of prophets, of the beauty of the Book of Mormon. This is one way that you can dive into the story of Abish, but I hope that it gives you food for thought as you go and think about prophets, seers, revelators, temples, your own testimony, and your role in the gathering of Israel and the work of the Lord. Thank you for being on Latter-day Divers. I'm looking forward to continuing to learn and dive with you into the next one. Please like this video if you found it was helpful, share it. Subscribe to the channel. Help us to grow as a platform for diving into the scriptures together. You guys are awesome. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Latter-day Divers.